Hey there, it's Brennan from Gongs Unlimited, the king of gong suppliers. And if you've ever been on our website or ever looked for a gong in general, you might get overwhelmed because as you can see, there's a lot of variety. And it's hard to know where to even begin if you wanna get a gong. Are you looking for something for healing? Are you in a band trying to do something avant-garde? Or do you just wanna try it out and you don't know what you're looking for? That's what I'm here for. Because today we're gonna look at how to choose your first gong. The first obvious thing that you might be looking at when you're looking to buy a gong is price, because there's quite a variance. You might go on our website and say, these two gongs look exactly the like, but there's a $2,000 difference between them. Or you might see that there's a $1,000 difference between gongs that look the same or are a different size. We have videos on the website that could you know, explain a little bit what the difference between those can be, but it can still be overwhelming. The two big types of gongs you're gonna be dealing with are German style gongs like this from companies like Peisty or more boutique companies. And then there's Chinese gongs, the unlimited brand, a cheaper gong for two reasons, manufacturing and materials. These are also known as nickel silver gongs. They're made from a different alloy that costs a little bit more money to make because of the nickel in it, where these are just pure bronze. Also, for the Chinese gongs, the cost of manufacturing is significantly less because they're not as precisely made. There's a lot more variance in the product of a Chinese gong, which can be good depending on what you're looking for. So there is no answer distinct such as this gong is better because it costs more. This gong is just manufactured to be a little more perfect. So if you're looking to get into the gong game, but you don't have either a lot of money to spend or you don't wanna spend all that much money before you really get to know what it's like having one and what you want in a gong, typically a great starting place is going to be a Chinese gong. Not just because of the price point, because there's such a great variance in what you can do at that price point. Whether it's something like this, a mother Tesla, or something like this, a wind gong, they're both still Chinese gongs and very similar in price. Thus, a lot of bang for your buck. So this is why a lot of people start with Chinese gongs before moving in to something more artisanal or something with a bigger price tag. The other thing that you're gonna be noticing when it comes to pricing is that size matters. A gong that is bigger can be used for a much larger variety of sounds and purposes. This is a 30 inch gong compared to this, which is a 40 inch gong. And as you can tell, the difference in sound One of these gongs is not necessarily better sounding than the other, but there's a lot more variance in what you can do with this versus what you can do with this. You can get a deeper sound, you can use a wider variety of mallets, and you can get more of a sonic landscape out of it than this, which is gonna have a more focused sound. The reason that we have videos on our website for every individual product is because it's kind of hard to tell the difference without having that. You can't just say uh, we have a 30 inch German style gong and a 30 inch mother Tesla gong and somebody's gonna know exactly what they sound like. There's a big variance in what that could be. And so we record them all individually. So if you wanna hear the difference between a 40 and a 30 in depth, make sure to check out those videos. Take something like this up here. This is what we would call a sound creation gong. This is made by Broder Etkin. It's a 22 inch gong and it's got a great distinct sound. But it's not a loud one. That's because it's only 20 inches. It's a little petite gong. Perfect for somebody wanting to do individual healing, but if you're going to be using it on a room full of people laying down that you wanna give a group healing to, this is probably not gonna cut it. Compare it to something like this, a 40 inch Peisty Symphonic gong, a giant gong is good not because it's a big giant thing that's cool to look at, but because the sound is just gonna carry in a big room. If somebody's looking to get a gong to be a practitioner for a group of people, or a gong that's gonna be in a big room to really fill it up with sound, then you're gonna be wanting to look at a giant gong. 
something maybe 38 inches or bigger. And if you don't have the space to justify getting a big gong that's gonna be loud to everybody there, but you wanna have a gong for healing purposes or for whatever reason that everybody can get to experience in a smaller room, then you can also look at something like a hand gong. Grata Sonora makes all sorts of individual hand gongs. So do most of the German companies in small sizes. Hand gongs are typically something 22, 24 inches and under that will come with a handle. So you can pick it up off of your gong rack, give it a whack, and you can bring it all around the room. You can do this with yourself if you want to be able to walk and have the gong too, but it's a great tool for someone who wants to travel around. Along with the purpose you're gonna be using the gong for, it's important to keep in mind the room itself. The size of the room is gonna matter a lot when it comes to which gong is right, because a giant gong in a small room can maybe overblow the sound and you're not gonna get the perfect effect that you're looking for, but a giant gong in a giant room expectedly works well together. Something we would recommend is to buy a gong that is correspondent to your room size. Are you gonna put it in a big grate area with a tall ceiling? Then you can look at things like 40 inch gongs, 50 inch gongs. If you're looking for a gong for a medium sized room, say your standard living room here in the US, then you can comfortably get something like a 30 inch gong, a 32, a 28. Keep in mind that gongs can get quite loud. So if you're in an apartment, you might want something smaller. Something that's gonna be perfect for an individual person playing, but it's not gonna get noise complaints from the neighbors downstairs. And then of course, there's everything in between. It doesn't just jump from 30 to 40. We have 32, 34, 36, you name it, it exists. Standard sizing, people will usually start with something around 28, 30 to 32. Anything bigger than that range would be considered a big gong. Anything smaller would be considered a smaller gong. The reason that range is a bit of a sweet spot is it's the range in the range of size in which you start to get a big variance of sounds like the big gong has, and you can start using more equipment. You can get into the use of flumies if that's something that's interesting to you. Or you can start using small mallets versus big mallets to get a large range of sound. So that's something to definitely keep in mind is, do you want a big gong, a small gong, or a gong right in the middle? Typically, a gong right in the middle is a great starting choice, but a lot of people do start with a smaller gong because for most instances, if somebody is just getting it for individual healing purposes, having a nice 20 to 24 inch gong can really give you a great introduction to the world of sound healing and the world of gongs. When it comes to the purpose you could be using these gongs for, it's something such as personal healing versus group healing. If you're looking to use a gong on other people or for a group of people at once, what you're gonna be looking for is gonna be different than somebody who's just gonna be putting a gong in their apartment to do some individual sound healing. And very different than somebody who might want one for an avant-garde music project. A German gong is great for because it's a centerpiece with a big booming sound, but also in giant gongs, you can get something like this, a 40 inch mother Tesla, a 40 inch thick, strong Chinese gong. A reason that you might wanna go for this over something like the German gong is simply sturdiness. Are you gonna be traveling with your gong or is it gonna live in your home? If you're somebody who would be doing healings on the go or someone who would be traveling around for life in general and you're gonna to wanna to bring your gong with you, you might wanna consider getting something like a Chinese gong. The reason for this is because it's about twice as thick as a German gong and it's a lot sturdier. It's hand hammered and it can take more of an impact if you were to drop it. It can take a little more of what life has to throw at things on the road versus the more delicate German gong. But if you're gonna be working out of a studio, this is gonna be something that's gonna be hanging in place for a while, then getting a giant German gong is perfect for a lot of those settings, especially because they look elegant, they sound elegant, and they can really fill up a room with sound. But what if you want something other than the standard German style gong or one of the Chinese gongs? Well, that's when you can get into the stuff we got over here. So say you're someone who likes personal expression in what they have in their home or in their healing space. Or say you're someone who is a 
musician who wants to experiment with different sounds, different percussion sounds within the music you're creating. There's more than just the German gongs, symphonic gongs, and big Chinese gongs. Take something like this. This is an Italian style gong, both of these are, and they're both made out of steel versus bronze. Primarily a steel and nickel alloy. This is made by a company called WAM, this by Grata Sonora. These gongs can range big in size and small in size, just like the German or Chinese gongs can, but they offer a, a different sound and a very distinct look. So you're not just limited to the standard bronze appearance that you might be used to in gongs. Say you've been introduced to the world of gongs through a, a sound healer or a friend who has gongs or something, and you have a sound in mind that you like. Maybe you're looking for an individual sound that you've heard already. What's great about those bigger brands of gongs, such as Peisty, such as Meinl, is that you can expect an amount of consistency if you buy a 30-inch symphonic or if you buy a tuned Chiron gong. But maybe what you want is something a little more unique, something you can say is one of one and you know nobody else in the world has. That's when it can be great to explore things like artisanal gongs. Brands like Tone of Life, Gongland, Broder Etkin bring a lot to the table as far as individual gongs that neither look the same as the last gong that they made nor sound exactly the same. They're all made to be their own individual thing. That's especially the case when you get to things like Italian gongs, where they have individual styles for each gong that gets made, and it can truly be a one of one. So it's important to know if you're looking for something that is going to be a more consistent sound, maybe something you've heard in the past, or something that you want to be a real individualized gong that's just for you. Along with things like these Italian gongs, we have things such as uh, Vietnamese gongs, Thai gongs, Nepalese gongs, gongs that are more specifically tuned to a sound. So if you were bringing these in for a more musical purpose and you knew exactly the note you wanted, then you could get a nipple gong that's tuned to that exact note. Or a Nepalese gong that's made out of a bell metal so it has more of a focused sound. because not everybody is gonna want a big wash. Some people want that more focused sound, which is another difference between a couple types of gongs. Take this wind gong versus something like this, a dark star. A wind gong is a traditional type of Chinese gong that we have multiple cousins of here, whether it be the temple wind or the solar flare. They have no rims and because of that, they have a much washier sound. The wind gong is going to bring a wash to the table if you want something that's really going to have a big, broad sound, but not necessarily a focused bass tone. Whereas something like a Dark Star, if we're going to continue with Chinese gongs, or in Atlantis, a Mother Tesla, those heavier gongs are going to have a bit more of a bassy sound. So take, for example, this. This is a Minel Chiron gong. It is one of the Minel series planetary gong, which most German style gong makers offer. Planetary gongs that are tuned to a specific planetary frequency. This also offers opportunity for somebody who would want to accompany something like singing bowls or other instruments because you can get that focused center tone. That something like a Chinese gong or a sound creation gong is not gonna offer you. The two main types of sounds that you can get from a gong are a wash and a focus. The most focused sounds being a tuned planetary gong or a nipple gong like this, where you can get an individual note. And the washy gongs, such as an earth style gong and a wind gong, can offer a lot for the healing effects that people search in gongs, which is truly to wash out your thoughts, get lost in the sound, in that washy, windy, noisy effect. And then there's the heavy gongs and German style gongs who don't necessarily have the same sound but offer something similar. Consistent bass and a lot of variety depending on where you're hitting the gong. So even though the world of gongs can be daunting to get into, Gongs Unlimited is a resource 
not just because I work here, but because we have a website with a recording of every single gong we have. This is a starting place to let you know a little bit about a lot of the different types of gongs. And we're gonna include a lot in the description for informative material, links to each of these gongs, and hopefully give you a clue about where to start out when you're looking for buying your first gong. Thanks for watching. I'm Brennan from Gongs Unlimited, and I'll see you next time.